everyone and welcome to my channel. Do you remember when you were a child and you would come up with a new game or invent a new play or something and you would just let your ideas run wild and there was no one there to stop you or to structure your ideas or to put deadlines on them or anything like that. You could just let your imagination run completely mad. I kind of miss those days a little bit because I think nowadays there is a tendency of thinking about the brainstorm process as part of a planning or part of a wider structure within a project, which is of course true to a certain degree, but it is also within the brainstorm that you have to let your imagination run wild. Because if you don't, you're not coming up with new ideas, you're not coming up with um, anything innovative at all. You have to be able to step outside your comfort zone, particularly during a brainstorm process, or you will end up creating the same idea and the same pro uh, uh, projects over and over and over again. Obviously, there needs to be a certain structure uh, to any kind of project work, and obviously uh, there will be deadlines, especially to a brainstorm, because there is such a thing as brainstorming too much. Uh, there comes a time when your ideas have actually peaked, and um, it's not actually getting better. None of, none of the ideas are getting better just because you brainstorm more. So obviously you have to structure things uh, at some point. But there are ways of going about the brainstorm process without limiting the, uh, the creative process and making sure that the really good creative, sometimes really out there mad ideas are also taken into consideration. And that's some of the things I would like to talk about in this video. If you like the content of these videos please like them subscribe to the channel and add your comments it would be really great to hear about your experiences in this because obviously there are so many different ways of going about a brainstorm these are some of my experience that like that I would like to run through today uh, but there are like a zillion different ways of approaching this and of doing this but let's dive into a few now, first of all, I think a brainstorm usually starts with a meeting. It can be an internal meeting within a team and you will have some idea about what this brainstorm is about. Is it for a new exhibition or a new guided tour or a holiday activity or whatever it is? And you might invite people to this meeting and you might draft some sort of email with uh, some bullet points or keywords or whatever it is beforehand so people have an idea about what is this about and where are we going? You might also already have a theme or a topic, especially I find when you're doing exhibitions, you, you kind of know the broader theme for this before you start. Now, um, a way of sort of grouping ideas or indeed approaches can be via affinity diagrams. It's, uh, there are many ways of doing this, and if you, if you uh, look into affinity di diagrams, you'll find uh, many, many different ways of approaching doing this. But essentially, it is about grouping ideas that are not necessarily alike, but they share potential. So they share perhaps approaches or methods uh, or way of going about things or explaining certain things or themes, uh, narratives within, for example, an exhibition. Now, one approach I really like because it kind of requires and demands that you're being really creative and you have to think differently is the six thinking hats. I'm sure you've come across this one, but I'd like to go uh, a little bit into what it actually is because I really find it quite fun and quite effective as a little exercise. Essentially, you have six different hats, um, with each of them having a different color and they represent different ways of approaching or thinking about a project. Now you can uh, split your team up in groups, so e each group um, has a different imaginative hat on, or, uh, or if, you, if you're not that many people you can simply take turns in wearing a different hat. Now the idea is that you write down or you come up with everything uh, that is relevant for uh, whatever hat you're wearing. So let's say uh, you are or your group is wearing the white hat. Now the white hat represents information uh, or facts, meaning everything that we need to know or everything, every information that we already have for doing this project. So it's not about how do we do it, it's about what information do we need, what facts do we already have available. The yellow hat is the optimism hat. 
So this is the hat where you explore all the positives and you explore the, ben uh, the benefits and the value. Uh, where, what can we gain from this? What are some of the positives uh, about doing this, this project? Or indeed uh, venturing into this collaboration if it is a partnership project. Now the black hat, as you may have guessed, is uh, uh, very much the no hat. It's the judgmental hat. It's the critical hat. It's the uh, defining the challenges, the dangers, the difficulties. What can go wrong? This hat comes with a little bit of a caveat because while it's useful to look at what can go wrong, uh, it can also be a problem if this hat is overused because I think the human mind tend to be a program to look at what can go wrong whenever we venture into something new. So don't overuse this hat, but have a good constructive think about what can actually go wrong here, what do we need to be careful about. The red hat uh, signifies the feelings and your intuition. So this is where you express everything that has to do with your emotions. How do we feel about doing this project? Uh, what do we fear about it? What do we like and love about it? And what do we hate about it? So this is all about the emotions of a team and of individuals within this team. The green hat focuses on creativity, so this is the possibilities and this is also where you start to look long term. So what are some of the opportunities that may come out of doing this, this project? Um, is there some kind of long term benefit? Are there new networks or collaborations that we gain from doing this project? The blue hat is very much about the planning and the managing of a process or a project. So the blue hat is very much about making sure that all the other hats are being heard and listened to and included in uh, the planning and in the project. It's also about do we have time for this? How much is required? How much? Um, how many resources? How much effort? Time, money, etc. Um, do we need to put into this and how do we plan around that? I find this exercise uh, really fun to do actually and especially if you if you swap hats along the way because it kind of forces you as an individual or a member of a project team to think differently um, around the same project. So if you are a bit skeptical about a project or if you are incredibly enthusiastic and keen to do a project, you're kind of forced to think from another perspective when you go through all these hats uh, and that can be quite useful I find. Now, another really effective thing I've found, found is to get some external input. Invite someone who's not part of your team. It can, of course, be someone who works uh, within the same organization. It can be someone with a specific expertise uh, or background that you seek knowledge from. But it can also be someone completely outside this field of expertise and this organization and indeed this sector. As long as it's someone you feel you can trust, either from a personal perspective, uh, like a friend or family member, or uh, from a, um, an area of expertise. I actually did this little exercise once with a group of historians and we were brainstorming ideas for an exhibition and uh, for a publication and we actually ended up inviting a doctor and a nurse in because we were discussing historical diseases and we kind of knew how to approach them from a historical perspective but we didn't really know much about the medical and what sort of these diseases uh, what sort of impact they had on the human body or how they were treated and how it came to be that they no longer exist and so on. So having um, the medical perspective and the historical perspective side by side was a huge benefit and it also sparked quite a lot of creativity. That's just one example, but sometimes inviting someone um, who's completely outside what it is you're meant to be doing can be a really positive collaboration and they enjoyed it just as much uh, as we did. Now sometimes go on a trip, get outside. Uh, it doesn't have to be a, a, an organized trip where you go to visit a museum or a heritage site that uh, work with some of the same things you do. Sometimes that can help of course, but sometimes just going uh, to a different site, uh, have a look at what other people are doing. Get outside physically. If you sit in the same meeting room, um, maybe even in the same seat, and you brainstorm, 
uh, you will come up with the same ideas again and again. Sometimes you have to change environment. Go for a walk and talk. It can be difficult if you are a large group, but then split up. Go two, three, maximum four people together and brainstorm between you. The combination of physical activity and fresh air and uh, just doing something else can be just magical when it comes to, um, to really sparking the creative process. Make sure there's time and room uh, for spontaneity, for this completely mad out there way of thinking. Um, even though an idea seemed completely outrageous, um, and you might laugh a bit about it, make sure there's room for that. Because it is when you come up with these completely outrageous things that the good stuff is really happening. And it's also there that you step outside your comfort zone and you step outside something that you already know you're good at. We already know we can do this part, but we would kind of like to, to be able to do other things as well and to grow from that. So make sure there is time for that spontaneity and, from, uh, uh, and, and for uh, the really outrageous ideas as well. You might not go with them, but make sure it's allowed to think them and to say them out loud. Now, that also goes for mistakes. That's not really the right word to use, but sometimes it's actually useful to be allowed to make mistakes along the way. If you have created a work environment where no mistakes are tolerated, you really have a problem and you have quite a toxic work environment, make sure that it's allowed to learn as you go along. There's no point in embarking upon new projects and trying to gain new experiences and to grow if it is not allowed to learn. I feel brainstorming is really where the fun bits of uh, any kind of project uh, starts because that is where you can, you can really step outside um, the box and you can really uh, step outside your comfort zones and come up with new partners, new approaches, new uh, ideas, new ways of looking at your own work structure, your own collections, your own narratives and storytelling. So in a way it's kind of um, it's kind of where all the fun starts really. But it can also be a difficult process because obviously not every idea can be taken into consideration. Some ideas you have to literally put aside and say, okay, this is great, but we simply can't do them right now. Maybe we don't have the resources or maybe they just don't fit together. Uh, but that's part of the brainstorming process as well to, in a way, narrow things down, but also making sure that you keep the fun, you keep uh, the innovative approach. And first of all, that you keep the excitement.